ISRO has put together a satellite that is going to be a real, real force multiplier for the Indian Air Force. This is called the GSAT 7A. The GSAT 7A is the second military centric satellite for communication purposes that the Indian scientific community has put together after it provided the Navy the Rukmini in 2013. But this particular satellite is going to be very, very important for furthering operations, for reconnaissance, for communications, and for scanning the territories immediately on India's front lines with Pakistan and China, which the Air Force needs to have real-time inputs on should we decide to prevent a major attack on Indian territory or we decide to further our own politico-military goals by carrying out another set of surgical strikes or deeper strikes into so-called Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Now, how this works is that the Air Force has a number of assets right across the country. It has air bases, it has logistics centers, it has drones that operate, it has fighters, it has regular reconnaissance being carried out by something called the AVACS, Airborne Warning and Control Systems, and it has various missile systems in place which need to be connected and have real-time communication through one major platform. The GSAT 7A is the one platform that will provide the Air Force and therefore, in military terms, this is called a force multiplier because it helps you to make all your assets used and to be put to use in a manner that is best suitable for your strategic interest. Now, the naval satellite which ISRO made, the Rukmini, gives the Navy a 2,000 kilometer or 2,000 nautical mile spread in the Indian Ocean region through which naval ships that are operating in the entire Indian Ocean region from the coast of Africa right beyond Southeast Asia towards the waters of the Pacific are able to connect and communicate effortlessly through their higher command. India has also put together a space command now which has the sanction of the government and therefore the future conflicts are not going to be about bombing each other's targets or large troop movements across the border but it is your ability to use satellites, communication skills, precision weapons and force multipliers that is going to tilt the edge in your favor. Now most important aspect that this particular platform could provide to India is the near-term goal of responding to the next big Pakistani terror attack by carrying out a series of precise surgical strikes as we did in the past because even in the last surgical strikes Indian forces were using satellite communications, drone related information and passing of pictures and acquiring enemy footprint and information and most importantly to be able to target fire other than putting just troops on the ground on specific enemy launch pads which Pakistan has created for the various jihadi groups who continue to threaten the peace and stability of the state of Jammu and Kashmir and are increasingly trying to get involved with the rest of India. Also, the GSAT 7A is part of a number of satellites. India has totally about 13 communication and military related information provisional uh, providing satellites which are in the air and the GSAT 7A is the latest achievement. What we must understand that our technology and our missile program is world class and one of the reasons is that India has always faced strategic restrictions by the international community on purchasing missiles and missile related technology and therefore our scientists have gone on to create world class missile, satellite and other space related technology because we couldn't buy it off the shelf. It is a lesson 
for the rest of our armed forces and the Ministry of Defense. That if India can be world class in producing technology in a very, very complicated area like satellites and missiles, why isn't India able to do the same in terms of producing the necessary military technology for the rest of our armed forces, which will then obviate the possibility of scams and scandals.